Riders, and welcome to another edition of The Flow. I am your co-host, Doc Rock, <laughs> along with my awesome co-host. Hey, everyone, it's Katie. <laughs> that's my favorite part. <laughs> everyone, it's Katie. That is my, I, I swear, that's my favorite part. I'm going to just, like, I don't know, make a little sound. That we should. Open the door. That would Open be so the fun. door or open the cabinet. Hey, everyone, it's Katie. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, you know what I learned this week, Katie? This completely useless information. I love it. What? I learned what the two bungee cords inside of an egg are called two... that hold the yolk in the middle. Bungee. A chalaza. Oh. A what? Chalaza. A chalaza. Come on, chicken lady. I did lady. not know that. know that. No, I'm joking. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm embarrassed now. I didn't I just know it. I found that out. <laughs> and I feel hella smart now that I know what a chalaza is. Ooh. Anyway, and they're completely edible. So I know that my family freaks out and makes me throw them away. And nine times out of ten, I just scramble it in and don't tell them. Anyway, so <laughs> we got a good show today. We got our awesome, awesome, awesome guest. Uh, you want an intro, Katie? You want me to do it? You do it. This is, I love okay, your intro. Listen, <laughs> listen, Kenya is the absolute bomb. She has a new book out, which we will tell you about in the discussion. And Kenya is an absolute phenom when it comes to vertical content. She's mostly crushing it on the TikTok with almost 510,000 folks that listen to her. Crazy. And uh, we listen to her, and she's just a dear friend. Absolutely love her to death. And you guys will see one of the funnest, coolest, smartest, geniuses people in the the planet <laughs> ladies and gentlemen kk ak kenya kelly that was awesome What's up, Smartest, keys? see doc, I love that. That doc is just better at intros than me i'm always i get too formal <laughs> <laughs> doc's like oh. I love it. <laughs> yeah i get it that was no, great after, after you after we break bread together all formality is out the window i'm no longer going to be formal with anyone that i had dinner with so yeah. <laughs> so it's over uh keys how are you i'm doing good very good i'm in sunny san diego so it's a great day all the time you see snowing you and I here have similar weather <laughs> it's good yep. in the separate days that it ain't other than that it's perfect mm, yeah <laughs> it's been flooding here a lot oh, so yeah. that's been yes. thanks yeah. Oh, so you guys got some back. That's good. That's good. All right. So first things, I definitely want to get into what we're going to talk about today, but I had to make sure that we sell some books. So mm -hmm. <laughs> how can mm -hmm. people get a hold of this book? I'm just going to do my job. Yeah. So the book is called How to um, Wait Before You Quit Your Job, A Strategic Guide for Entrepreneurs. And it's actually on Amazon or Kindle or my website, KiaKelly.com. Yeah. Grab okay. that. There you go. Yo. It's it's very very good stuff. You just got to make sure you're in there. All right. So yeah. why why for, first what brought you to write this book? Let's talk about that. Yeah. So the thing about that book is I was in network marketing for many years. Like I was in college and like probably 10 plus years. And one of the things that I watched happening over and over again was people were encouraging people to quit their jobs to go full time network marketing. And I watched it for me and other people where really knew how to be entrepreneur. We knew how to have a job. <laughs> and so to have incredible success, you know, with entrepreneurship, when you know how to be an employee was I just watched people lose everything. And then once I got into the consulting industry, I started watching the same thing. People be encouraged to quit their jobs and not really understanding that people don't have the education mm -hmm. on how to be an entrepreneur because we don't go to school for that. And so I wrote the book because I was, a, I was frustrated with it. And so I, I put it out. That's yeah, super, so man, important. It's so funny. I totally remember the quit your job phase of it. And I also remember, like, uh, even if you're in sales, no matter what, and at the time I was doing real estate and insurance, they're like, you should do, uh, you know, network marketing because mm -hmm. it will teach you how to sell better. And yeah, it was good for a hot minute. And then it was. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I love network marketing. It's a great, incredible industry. I just watched leaders not really, really think about each individual person that not everybody is ready to be a full-time entrepreneur, you know? Yeah. Yes. Well, I think it's and important. Those, those I think that's important. Trainings. Super important advice for all of our, for Ecamm fam as well, because I think it, it's really, you know, we're in a phase now where everyone is like, oh, you know, I can, I can quit my job to be a content creator. I can quit my job to be a podcaster. And it it is harder. And there's a lot that you may not even realize oh. that you don't know. So, yeah, I think it's uh, super applicable mm -hmm. to everyone listening and watching. You mm -hmm. know why I think that's good, uh, good info to Kate's is a lot of people want to quit because that seems like it's in vogue. But 
what happens is you might have the video side wired just because you're naturally good on camera, right? Mm -hmm. or, or or let's just say you're not. But and for this example, <laughs> let's say you're really good on camera. Um, you might have the editing part down. But shooting videos, good camera, good lighting, good sound, and editing good videos doesn't make you a content creator because there is a whole bunch of back end. I mean, a metric ton of back end, which nobody mm -hmm. ever sees because it's sort of the way the gram works, right? So mm -hmm. people forget that your favorite creators, many of them have a pretty large team. Mm -hmm. And even some of your smaller creators will have another team, right? So, for instance, we couldn't even do what we do without <laughs> Paul and Luis, yeah, right? Caleb. So on top of the regular team that we have of Katie, Caleb, and myself, and then our support team, Meg, Tyler, uh, Midori, Mike. If we forget Mike, we'd be in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> And and then of course the developers can and Glenn like we got the perfect nine but even with the perfect nine we're like we kind of still need Paul and Luis much to my chagrin I'm joking <laughs> I'm, I'm joking and not to mention all of the moderators thank you Neil for jumping in today because Paul is elsewhere right so I don't think people really realize that in order to produce all the stuff that we produce even as a company of nine we still depend on Marshall Neil Paul Caleb yeah. da Daniel to break and test things mm -hmm. you know on and for gens to just keep it light and lively around here and the mm -hmm. excellent content that they produce so yeah it's it's not that easy so I really right. appreciate that insight because I do think the I do think the game is sold a little bit too easily yeah. by yeah. folks. You know, it's like, well, if you buy this cologne, all the girls would love you. <laughs> yeah, but would you know what to do once you got that? Like, do you <laughs> yeah. know what to do? No, can you keep it? You know that, that old school song is cheaper to keep her. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, don't you have something called the four hundred thousand dollar divorce? I shouldn't say that joke around you. That's always my that's my tagline I use on TikTok, and it gets me makes me go viral. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, well, I made I, like I didn't I didn't get four hundred thousand dollars getting divorced. I made it building a business afterwards. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Okay. All right. So this is cool. Well, All right, I'm, so of course, I'm go ahead, Katie. super eager to know how you got into vertical video because I think that. This is a really big space. It's a really important space. And it's not really a place that a lot of Ecamm people start in. There's only like kind of a few of you who I know who are like incredible at it. So um so yeah, how did how did you kind of make the decision to focus on vertical video? Yeah. So back in 2019, I was focusing on, I had a brand design agency doing personal brand consulting and then design. And coming to the end of the year, I was so frustrated with the business because it could only go so far. Mm -hmm. Now I'm also, I'm Christian. I'm somebody who prays. And so I always pray for creative strategies for my business. Cause I'm like, I'm smart, but I feel like if God <laughs> created the whole world, pretty sure he can give me business strategies. Mm. And so at the end of 2019, I was praying for a strategy. And then when 2020 rolled around and we started watching COVID happen, we didn't know what it was. I really started praying and like, cause I was like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I don't want to go homeless, I, you know, whatever. And I heard him tell me to get onto TikTok. And I was like, you mean the baby shark challenge? Because <laughs> I knew about that from 2018, but I was like, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. Why would he tell me to do that? And I just kept hearing it and kept hearing it. And I finally was just like, fine, I'll download the app. And so I started trying to figure out how to create content on the app because nobody was talking about it because it was before we all got quarantined. Yeah. And so I just was kind of like dibbling, dabbling. And one day I went viral, just having fun on the app. And then it clicked. I'm getting this creative strategy because there's something that's about to happen and God has invited me into it. So I just doubled down on it and I spent all of 2020 trying to figure out the buttons and just talking and teaching the same way I was on Facebook and Instagram. And at the end of that year, I decided I am going all in on the, on TikTok marketing. And once I did, everything changed. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm loving uh, Lee, Lee, who's hanging out with us in our live studio audience says, I kept making fun of vertical video. I hated it and I thought it was dumb, but I was wrong <laughs> about the power of shorts. It's so true. I think like we, 
you know, we often are like, it, it seems like it's just this sort of like silly, funny, I don't right. know if I really want to dance <laughs> on camera space. Yeah. But there's a lot of people now that are creating like really effective businesses on you know, on platforms like TikTok and Instagram and certainly in the YouTube short space. So um, so how do you... I'm, I'm with Lee. Go ahead. No, you know, go for the, it. The, the, thing, the thing is, I'm with Lee. So I come from the professional video world and I put in my question because I want everybody to know I have the same question you do. Um, mm. And for me, when the flip camera came out, okay, vertical video started from the flip camera. And most people don't remember that, but it was a little thing that looked like what an iPhone similarly looks like now. But Sony had a camera called the PC9. It still shot normal video, but it was in a vertical format. It was easy to hold. Mm. And then somebody else came out and said, well, let's invent this thing called the flip camera. And it made little vertical videos. And we just thought they were dumb. Why? Because at that time, flat screens were starting to take off right mm -hmm. we finally got flat screens under a thousand dollars and everybody could have one and then now you know it's funny because they're 250 <laughs> and everybody's making like well the guy smashed the tv during the super bowl tvs are 250 bucks now who cares if he smashed the tv anyway so from a professional space we always hated it because youtube started to get a bunch of people shooting vertical videos and i admit there's a whole psa about it i've had entire rants on my channel about it i'm like don't do that you're crushing your content later on you won't be able to play it because everything is 16 by 9 and then 2007 rolled around and the iPhone came out and then it just went psycho mm -hmm. and so for me part of the struggle is that that framing still bothers mm -hmm. me and I just do it I do it through the pain but <laughs> as a person who basically I, I come up editing commercials and documentaries and shooting for that and even doing commercial as a talent I struggle with just making a vertical video. And the other thing that bothers me, and you really should just tell this to everyone, most people just do it so ugly. And I come from the production space. I cannot take off my suit and just go to the store in t-shirt and shorts. It, my brain can't do it. How do you make mm -hmm. it stop? Yeah. So the, okay. So I have lots of different thoughts. Um, one of the things is that a person who like you, who is like, all your experience, your professional background and the way that you think, of course, it would make it harder for you to do these seemingly unedited, low production value, low budget type of things on vertical because of how your brain has been wired all of these years, you know. Um, but the thing that is happening, like there's a lot of things that are happening, but one of them is that as a business owner, if our goal is to be able to reach our audience, right, and keep their attention, and then at some point in time, get them to take an action with us, we have got to look at, first of all, what is happening with human behavior. And human behavior is the average attention span is eight to 11 seconds. And so, but that's on something that is good, right? So if you <laughs> so watch true. a if you watch a movie, they're doing cuts, jump cuts every three to five seconds because of attention span and it just works really well. And so if that's the case and we are still focusing on long horizontal or content in, in general, we have got to remember that like, if our audience is constantly thinking squirrel, 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 <laughs> How do we, you know, keep and capture their attention? And just one of the ways to do that, of course, is through short vertical video. But also it's important to know that what do people carry with them everywhere they go, no matter what? Their phones. And how are their phones shot? Their phones are all vertical. And so, yes, they can turn their, their camera and go horizontal. But the natural tendency today is, is to still do things vertically on social media because of our because our human behavior and then how phones are kind of like set up. So when a person is thinking about, should I use vertical video? There's there's a lot of things that kind of happen with a person. One, they're going, oh, it's just those dancing TikTok type things because of what they saw in 2020 mm -hmm. or people that were pointing and all that type of stuff. But what really needs to happen is that business owners need to go, okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me put my bias aside. Let me go and look at successful people that are using vertical video in different aspects. Like one is who's using vertical video to grow their podcast? Who's using it to sell their, visual, uh, their digital products, mm -hmm. their physical products? Like just look at the successful people that are crushing it, but then they go, okay, that is a good blueprint 
of what vertical video can look like. And then your production can be just as great in vertical. Like there's some people on Instagram and TikTok that I'm just like, whoa, yeah. when you look at their production vertically and they've gained millions and millions and millions of followers, their email lists are growing, they're selling their products. It's like they have built this vertical thing. They still have long form YouTube channels. You know, they still have that, which is making them money over and over again, but they're not abandoning the baby that's, that's crushing it right now, you know, for just horizontal. How do you think through an approach? I think a, a challenge for a lot of people in the podcasting space is they're doing like what we're doing today, right? So they're, they're recording like a long form video podcast episode, but they mm -hmm. they know the importance of shorts and of vertical video. And I think it's complicated for us as well to think through how do I like repurpose video for these platforms? Should I be repurposing it or should I be recording like separate vertical video to help kind of promote and be the, you know, be additional video content for my podcast? How do you, how, what would your recommendation be for getting into that space without completely changing the format of your actual podcast itself because it's working, but you want to be able to take advantage mm -hmm. of these other platforms? Um, so there is, okay. So a couple things, one, a person that I feel like does this really well is Sean Cannell. Mm -hmm. Now we all know Sean Cannell has production and all the things. And so I don't know what his space looks like, but the way it looks like to me is that it seems like Sean has multiple cameras that are recording him when he's doing his episodes. Mm -hmm. Right. But it also seems like Sean, the pre-production, it seems like that is very, very strategic and intentional. And what I mean by that is, and this is something that I'm working on for my own business, business is, okay, I'm going to record this video for YouTube. I'm going to edit it. Let me do my pre-production of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, point whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And I would say that the most perfect scenario, which costs more time, is taking those breaths to be able to create short video. So what do I mean? If I'm recording one long horizontal video, I'm not live streaming it, and I have my five points, then I know I'm going to talk my point one, and then I'm going to pause and give myself the time for for the edit for that that one thing or whatever and then that way you're making that point and you're of course you're looking direct, directly into the camera for that point so then when you go to edit for a short video you're just kind of chopping up what you're doing because one of the things about long content is that we're we're talking for a long period of time. Like the way that we're talking, the way that we're wording everything is intentionally like, this is going to be 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever. When you're recording a short, you're recording it with intention. I am talking about point one. I am talking about point two. Mm -hmm. And so if a person really wants to be strategic when it comes to longer content, you know, and not just, oh, let me just repurpose a a, a podcast video that I did, but like more intentional, then you've got to be very strategic in that. Now, let's just say that you're like, okay, I don't have the time to do that. I don't have cameras and pre-production to do that. Great. Then one of the things that's going to be beneficial is B-roll, which Sean te Sean's team does a great job with that as well. If you're going to do long horizontal content, then of course we know shooting at an angle, that way you're able to zoom in and do all the things, but then adding B-roll, using things like CapCut for your captions to really make that video feel more strategic um, and intentional. I think one of the things people do wrong is they just go, I love Opus, I love Munch, I love all the mm -hmm. video AI. But what a lot of people do wrong with their podcast videos, they just plug it into, into the software and then just expect, oh, this is going to produce really well, <laughs> yeah. which it could be good. But if you want to be even more strategic with it, then after you've plugged it, now you've got to do a little bit here and there. Yeah. I don't feel like you need to do a hundred vertical videos to promote one podcast. Um, but I think that you can just be more intentional when you're recording that initial video. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's is 100 percent. You know, I just thought of something while you were talking about this, and I realized I do it in my streams, sort of accidentally, maybe on purpose. <laughs> but like, if I if we are doing something right now, and you come up with something really, really viable, I will stop and I will reiterate that, and I'll try mm -hmm. to do it 
in my head in a 60 second beat because I've done so many commercials and live reads for radios. I can land on 60 without even thinking about it. It's just a thing. Yeah. Uh, and then if you mess it up, like I like to just go in, in uh, some whatever editor recently we've been playing with scenery, which is dope. Uh, I could actually just speed it up just a smidge. So mm-hmm. instead of talking like this, all of a sudden I'm doing my point exactly like this. And it turns out that even talking faster actually works for the, cause people have to listen to it multiple times. Mm-hmm. So Luis, that gives you an opportunity to be full Puerto Rican. Uh, as, as you do your shorts because you can go faster. Um, and yeah, so I, I've totally caught myself in the stream, like stopping and doing a part I know is going to be exactly cut for a short. But I think you said something hella valuable, and I want everybody to hear this. The AI choppers are dope. And if the AI chopper gets it close but messes it up, Take that idea from the AI chopper and just re-record it. It's yeah. probably faster for you to take the idea that the AI chopper came up with yep. and for you to pull your phone up, hold it, because I just discovered this recently. Kenya, please tell me if I'm right or wrong. When <laughs> I record my shorts like such, it has a certain amount of value. But when I record my shorts like such and it's a little bit, you know, not like this kind of shaky, but like this kind of shaky a little bit is actually better because mm. I am hearing from friends that over polish tanks on vertical platforms. You know, it. everybody's saying different things. And I really just feel like it's, it's the experience. content and it's the person, yeah. you know, so like yeah, I, I am watching some people who have very good polished vertical content soar right you know with their camera like the teaching videos and i'm watching people who are doing teaching videos just like this no and it's just like the sitting style i think it's really about what is happening in the actual video like what are the edits that are happening it's like brock johnson love brock brock is always sitting at his desk doing his talks but he has his editor that is putting all these different things in the video to make it more dynamic you know the the initial uh the initial opening the hook uh the transition you're watching all those things happen. So I think both of them are great. But if you want to be able to just sit there, record like Brock, then then you have to have an editor who is has an eye for keeping people's attention. Yeah. Yes. I think you guys I are right. Just too, watched that a the, video about that. Yeah. I think you're I think you're right, too, that I, I heard recently when we were at Podfest, this like amazing uh, presentation on AI. And I've now listen to like what feels like a bajillion different presentations on all the different AI tools. But what she said that I thought was so valuable and what you just echoed is it, the AI needs to be the starting point. Like the AI is saving a ton of time in finding the genius things that you said in your episode, in giving you like more data on your audience, in doing all of these things. But that doesn't mean that like you throw it into Opus or whatever other AI tool and you're like, well, done. Here are my clips. Like I'm going to send them through. We're all guilty of it. I, yeah. I still am bad at doing this, but it, it should be the starting point, as you said, to, to thinking through like, oh, AI thinks these are the most valuable things that I said in the episode and it ranks them like it gives you like a rating for them. So, yeah, like Doc said, take those and either, you know, make the tweaks to them or expand on them or record different videos on it. Or maybe that's a great, Mm -hmm. you know, deeper dive for a future episode. But it's always the starting point. It's not going to do all of the work for you. It's going to get you all the data you need to be strategic about what you're going to do going forward. Correct. Yeah. I just saw this video by a kid named Oscar Owen, which I thought was incredible. He's a magician guy, but he was talking about how the Mr. Beast edit, the Alex Hamozzi edit is slowly getting just people are over it. Right. Because oh, yeah. as business people, the one disadvantage to doing hyper cut editing is it attracts basically younger people <laughs> and yeah. they don't they don't spend money the way you need your audience to spend money. Your older audience, they don't necessarily like the hyper cut edits so he's showing you how to do both and Kenya just kind of spoke about it where you sit down and you do your points but then you use on screen elements like emoji and words and like b-roll to to carry that that point but the edit isn't so jumpy Mm -hmm. it is a good balance of the two and I highly agree with that I was just uh, in our in our final cut editing group that Matthew runs I sent that video to Matthew because I I literally watched a bunch of older people try to do beast edits and they look horrible (laughs) it's it's like it doesn't it doesn't match what you're talking about we're talking about um, like grief counseling 
And the video is bouncing yeah, all over. You don't the want place. that for a grief and I'm like, video. I'm like, come on, man. Mama just died. I don't want to see you try to be puts up everybody. Like it's not yeah. working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's that it's that good, good balance. Okay, so after the edits, right? What is the biggest struggle for people when it comes to vertical? Um, well, even before the edits, the biggest edit is people just doing them. You know, that's, that's the biggest problem is people are like, just not seeing what is happening, but it doesn't surprise me because if you look at Facebook, when first Facebook first came out, there is no way we would ever create an account on Facebook. It was for college students. Yeah. There is no <laughs> way I'm going to put my picture of my family on Facebook. There is no way I'm going to talk about my business on Facebook. I will never buy anything from Facebook. I will never run ads. You know, and so then we have today. So then you have this thing that we all learned about with Vine and it was like Vine was for kids, right? And then TikTok, TikTok is for kids. Instagram is whatever. And so the vertical is still in that stage where some people are like, well, some people are like, okay, I get it now, but there's still a very large, a le- very large group of people that are like, I just don't see it. I'm not mm. going to do it. But once people actually do it, you know, and then they started the edit, the thing about it is, is that choosing, it's like choosing, okay, how do I say this? It's choosing where to be, right? Mm -hmm. Because yes, you know, you can go on Instagram Reels, which is amazing. Yes, you can go on TikTok. But I think that people don't really understand the value of being omnipresent, right? The value of you've created these amazing videos and you've edited them and all that. Why not get them all posted on Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, TikTok? Why not get them posted everywhere? Yeah. You know, because it only takes a couple seconds to do that. I mean, one of my clients, like we taught her how to use TikTok marketing to grow her business. And she was so excited. She made $20,000 in seven days. Awesome. But then she started taking those videos and putting them on Facebook Reels. Two million dollars later. She's obsessed with Facebook Reels. <laughs> Why? Because it exploded her business, yeah. you know? Whereas I got other clients of mine, they are obsessed with YouTube Shorts. These are people that are in their 30s, 40s, and 50s that are crushing it. And then, so it's kind of like, I think that if people would just start recording, editing, and then actually posting those things and being consistent, y'all, you will be so amazed at what happens with your or audience, your email list, and then the growth of your company. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's hugely important. I feel, I feel like it's one of those things too, that it's hard because it goes back and forth. Like again, and this is similar to AI, you know, I I know that I, as like a social media person in in a former life was always like, well, you need to like find the social platform that works for you and don't take on more than you can Mm -hmm. handle. And don't just put the same, don't just put the same message, you know, in the same way on every single platform. So it, like, Mm -hmm. I think part of it too goes back to like what you were saying from a strategic standpoint, You've created the video. The video itself can go on all these different platforms if you, you know, if you've got the time length and like the formatting correct for the kind of the minimum level that you need. But that doesn't mean like you can still change the messaging to make it fit, you know, whatever the different platform is. So you could have the same video and have like, you know, a different caption or description for TikTok as you do for Instagram, as you do for YouTube. Like it can... You know, if you're sitting here and you're like, oh, well, Katie and everyone else has already told me, like, don't put the same thing on every single platform. You can put the same thing on every single different platform, but you have to have the right intention and understand how people are consuming the content on each one of those platforms. Because it's really different. Mm -hmm. Like the audience on TikTok is going to be really different than the audience on Instagram. And like you just said, you know, the Facebook audience is going to be really different than what's it doesn't mean that it won't work. It just means you need to figure out like how to position it there. Yeah, a lot of times I film, most most times I film my content on my camera roll and then I'll edit in CapCut or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then now I can put it on the other platforms. My captions for, my description for Instagram is long. Mm-hmm. My description for TikTok is shorter. My description for Facebook is much shorter. So it's like same video, but I'm doing the different things the way that it yeah. needs to be done. And I am watching all of it. Like I had a video I posted on TikTok, reposted it to Facebook Reels, goes viral. I think I made like six thousand dollars. Congratulations! Like, That's awesome. Go, you know, from in stream ads. So I'm like, well, you know, let's keep going. <laughs> you know, and I again, I think what, for people that are just like trying to get into this, and I, I swear, my biggest hassle is I always want to edit stuff. 
but I think <laughs> maybe you should challenge yourself to spit out a hundred unedited shorts just so that you can stop thinking about like, I want to edit them all and spend all this time in the middle. Can you sprinkle in some fully pr- sprink, sprink, sprinkle? I like, yeah, it. Real I like sprink. Uh, <laughs> Can, can you sprink in, you know, some E40 in some like, uh, you know, vertical ones that have been produced? Absolutely. But if you want to get over the hurdle, I'm telling you, it's probably faster to hold your phone up and talk for 15, 30, 60 seconds. TikTok now wants you to go longer. Yeah, I think yeah. it's, and TikTok also wants you to go sideways. Yeah. <laughs> I will ask you about that in a second. But I think it's easier for you to just get them off your chest than for you to sit there and like, ooh, let me open up CapCut and do all these cool things. Can you yeah. post it again after you cap cut it? Yes. Why? Because the attention span on these platforms is about the, yeah, that's how long. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's talk about uh, TikTok longer and sideways. <laughs> Yeah. So right now, um, I I feel like a lot of things happen. And I just had a kind of revelation when you were talking earlier uh, that one of the things TikTok wants, and they've announced this like last year, is they launched a program called the Creativity Program, where if your videos are one minute or longer, you'll get paid, you know, kind of like like YouTube for for views or what have you. Mm -hmm. And so then they announced, uh, well, no, in the midst of all that, when you would go live on, um, like if you use Ecamm to go live on TikTok, you, if you were horizontal, of course, there was a button that started to show up that said full screen to the viewer. So then they were able to click full screen and now they can watch me full screen horizontal. Mm -hmm. So then this year they announced that if they want you to do more horizontal videos on the regular TikTok um, and that once your video is horizontal, people can click, you know, um, full screen and then now they can watch videos on full screen. And so what everybody is saying is that, oh, they're trying to be like YouTube and I, I feel like I got this like down low when you were talking. I don't feel like they're actually trying to be like YouTube. I feel like they're also trying to bring you to the TV screen. Yeah. Because TikTok is already, there's an app on TikTok and it's vertical and it's like this. But if everybody's shooting horizontal, then guess what happens? You're able to watch TikTok at home the same way you're able to watch YouTube at home. Now yeah. you're able to watch TikTok like this on full screen. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, now that is amazing. You know, so I think yes. that that's the bigger reason why TikTok is doing that. And it's y'all no hear me. I'm always yeah. saying the reason why. You, okay, listen, there's going to cause some fights right now because I have been <laughs> saying for three years, stop streaming on Facebook. But I built my whole platform on Facebook. Cool. Take a year to move them off of Facebook. Yeah. Facebook does not have and will not have and doesn't ever have a TV app. But YouTube has a TV app. I sold TVs for 26 years. My family owned an electronic store. Just the number of TVs on the island. If there is a four bedroom house. Honolulu, there's eight TVs in that house, <laughs> right? Every TV at Costco starting at 150, you can get a TV. They all have a YouTube button, but everybody hard headed because some, you know, person with a notebook told them to run your group on Facebook. And I'm sorry, I have no pain for you, but listen to her. If TikTok is making a TV app, don't sleep because now you're not just a mobile phone, not just the tablets, but you're also getting it on the TV too. Game yeah. recognized. It's, it's been on TV for a while and it's inside of Tesla's, but it's always been vertical on mm-hmm. in the Tesla's and vertical on um, on TV. And so I'm like, why would they want people to go full screen? And I'm like, oh, yeah. because if you nobody wants to watch, I don't want to watch TikTok vertical on my TV. I want to see things that are full screen on my TV. And I'm like, there you go. Makes perfect sense. Mm, What's really cool too about this is that, and we've been we've been testing a lot. We've been testing this a lot um, on the ecam side. So this is a, a teaser for what's to come. But you now can turn on ecam in the upcoming version. So it's in beta right now, but uh, but will be out to everyone soon. We have um, uh, safe zones. So now you can really be thinking about it as okay. You know, I'm going to record and stream maybe you're multi-streaming to like a youtube and to a tiktok or an instagram and you you are you have that kind of full screen but ecam will now give you that safe zone so you can see what the vertical will look like so now you can be creating Mm -hmm. 
in that widescreen, which is probably going to get you the most reach, but thinking about it from a vertical standpoint so that you can repurpose those videos later. If people are going to be watching it in vertical, which they may be likely are if they're on their phones, Mm -hmm. you know, they'll be able to kind of see the main content. Maybe it's you, maybe it's whatever you're demoing in that safe zone. But again, if Mm -hmm. they put it up on their TV, as they're, you know, likely to do, they'll have the full version of it. So I think we're all going to need to start thinking more about these different formats and how people are consuming our content and what that looks like. And hopefully it's, it's in a way that's really simple. So you, you know, you're recording kind of in that, you know, the largest that you can be, but the main content is still in that vertical space so that you're, you're not having Mm -hmm. to redo it and redo it and edit it and lose a lot of the, um, you know, the, the awesomeness and the quality of your video, because you're thinking about it strategically from the start. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just I mentioned this the other day when I was doing my stream. Um, so now that YouTube is allowing you to stream 16 by nine by 16 directly into YouTube and show up on the shorts feed that I did it on the first day and I had so much brand new people come <laughs> yeah. to this stream. Right. Yeah. When a platform announces a new feature, people use it because trust you me, they are prioritizing that content because (laughs) they're trying to make sure that they did something right. So don't be like, I'm not doing that. You don't know better. It's their platform. It's like if we come to my house and you try to wear a shoe in my house, I will cut you off at the ankles. We just no shoes in my house. It just doesn't (laughs) exist. So just like if, if YouTube says we want live vertical videos, I don't want to live stream. I don't feel like it, but I'm trying to grow my channel well you're not listening they just told you what they wanted they are the mm-hmm. host it is their platform when tiktok tells you that they want some horizontal content and you've been like i've been putting off tiktok for a hot minute a go watch Kenya's video that shows you how to do it she just dropped it last week sometime <laughs> See, I, pay, I pay attention Kenya, yeah, and then do. do it just put it up there you already have a bunch of already recorded in your drive in your synology you have tons of content just sitting there that you didn't want to turn into vertical so now your excuse is what yeah nothing talking to myself Mm -hmm. stop staring at me (laughs) Tina. all right so we staring at me we have some exciting surprise news for you because you are here as our special guest and because tomorrow is valentine's day Doc came up with this really awesome, exciting idea for you as our special guest and for all of our viewers who are listening. We partnered with (laughs) OBSPOT and we're giving you, Kenya, and and we're giving away an OBSPOT Tiny 2 camera so that you can (gasps) be using Ecamm, your fancy, fun, awesome new camera. And all and our new vertical <laughs> safe zones to be able to create all kinds of awesome content. So we're gonna send that one to oh you. You will get it soon. Happy Valentine's Day from us. Thank and, you. Uh, and everyone needs to be buying your book and following your accounts. Thanks to Neil for dropping those links in. And then tomorrow on our Instagram account, we're gonna give. We're gonna be hosting a giveaway for a week. So everyone watching and listening now you have early access to get in there and you know get your chance to win one so we can't we can't wait to see what uh what you create with it all of you (laughs) it's like our new favorite and of course because i'm because there's a snowstorm here i don't even have one to show doc do you have yours at the ready to show um my tiny yeah yes i I just heard about that from stephanie Wu, right yeah you'll be doing all your cool i I was telling stephanie about (laughs) this forever okay so listen I just dropped something out of here. It's just an extra. So this is my tiny two. I travel with this guy, so it's always in my backpack. Um, but it's a a uh, robot style camera similar to a drone. It has a Sony sensor. It has. Um, I won't get into the technical stuff. It's going to confuse y'all. Anyway, this is the <laughs> dopest. People say, "What's the best webcam you can get right now?" And I pretty much say you should be looking at a tiny two. If you need wow. it to follow you around, it can follow you around and do all of the myriad things. Zoom in like with that. hand gestures. Where, where are you putting it on your phone? No, I use it on my computer. Um, there's a. It comes with a little plate like this that allows you to do like you know set it up and what I love yeah, it yeah. is a magnet right so it just sticks right there so even if you're in your, <laughs> your house say, awesome. in your kitchen and you want to shoot a, a vertical say tiktok inside the kitchen you can actually set this bad boy up and like magnet it to the fridge point it at yourself and then just go live from the kitchen be like hey is kenya live from the kitchen y'all i gotta make these greens but i need to tell you all about your business 
I can handle your business and make greens at the same time. Like that old song, I can bring home the bacon. <laughs> you, you know what I cut. <laughs> you know what I cut. Yeah. So this thing is amazing. I love the magnet accent. You just plug it in by USB. And the camera quality is good. Like, it's amazing. And mostly I use it as my travel webcam. Mm -hmm. So like, um, you wow. know, last year when we went to uh, San Diego, you just throw this mm -hmm. in the bag. And then I could do streams right from my room and not sweat just wow. using my phone. It's slightly above a phone for the fact that it can do moving around. And normally what you do yeah. when you're moving around. So, Kenya, this is dope for you. It has whiteboard mode. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, I'm here. And then I'm going to give it a little hand gesture like that. And it's going to move to the whiteboard. And then you <gasps> can be like this, 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 and this. And then give it a hand gesture. And it come back to you. Be like, hey, now. You see how you do this, girl? Yeah. This is all you follow these steps right here. And it's like, mm-hmm, gangster. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. On real I want to make videos about this on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, happy, there you go. happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentino's Day. <laughs> See, all y'all who said, I was going to play a game to help me find a man. I was like, yeah, a special <laughs> no, we're not in that. We're helping you find a camera. Like, <laughs> I, I know. I was like, I know what I'm hoping for. So I was like, is it a game? Or like, what's it doing here? Okay, so I'm by, you can name him whatever you want. Yeah, you can name your new man whatever you want. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what he I works call for mine you. Tiny, so you yeah. might not want to go with that. Yeah. <laughs> tiny, that's <laughs> oh, oh, you know it's dope because a lot of females love this camera because you know normally the camera is a little intimidating because people worry about someone hacking in and turning on the camera and seeing you. Yeah. You just go. Uh, Okay, he's not he's not in. If you say sleep tiny, it'll go tweet, it'll duck his yeah, little head and off. turn off. It will disconnect. All you gotta do is go wow. hey tiny sleep and he just whoop, go like that. And then if you wake it back up, then it poop up. And then yeah, you can get a remote for it and do all kind of just like that fantastical things. It is incredible. Okay. Yeah. So but here's here's what the thing. So Katie and I have been telling people forever, if you want to be a guest on the flow, make sure you go to the website and fill it out and whatever. And people be like, I don't know if I'm ready, I don't know if I'm ready. See, Kenya came on Valentine's day and she got a gift it could have been you it <laughs> could have been you been but no nah, y'all was busy you busy in yourself still scared to put yourself <laughs> out there and scared folks don't eat that's why i'm fat and my mm -hmm. sisters are skinny because they scared and i'm not uh wait so i have i have one last question maybe doc has a last question as well but i want to make sure i cover this because selfishly i would like to know <laughs> so yeah. for, for me to you um, what is the what is the frequency game on on TikTok versus Instagram? So if I'm like super all into it and I'm recording a bajillion videos, how often should I be posting them? Is there too much? Does it differ between Instagram and TikTok? I don't really feel like it differs. Uh, well, for the longest time, it was the it was the quanti quantity over quality on on all of them. Mm -hmm. But right now you've got way more content creators on a bo all platforms. Mm -hmm. And so now people are really looking for a little bit more of the quality. And so for us, that means that means we have to spend more time on each video. So if somebody is just getting started, they're not used to doing anything at all, then I set their frequency for once a week because it's not a habit. It's not something they've been doing consistently. Mm -hmm. But a perfect scenario is once a day because once people start seeing your videos and liking you and your content, then they're going to want to come back every day. Like there's a content creator on TikTok. He's on everywhere, but I follow Keith Lee. And so I love watching his food tutorial tutorial video I mean, him like going to like restaurants reviews or whatever and so I look to see him every single day and so I'm always going to his account every day to see if he has a new piece of content and so the same thing will happen with people who start to like you they are looking to see you show up every day mm -hmm. so for me I like I'll post this video on TikTok today and then it goes on Instagram tomorrow and I'll rotate things that way I'm not just using one piece of content um it's just you know because we we're busy running our businesses and then we have our lives so once yeah. a week or once a day yeah yeah, definitely. Awesome. I really, really like that. And I just, first of all, thank you for doing this. Oh, it's so something much. that, you know, I was never anti TikTok because of the dancing things. Because although I can dance, my knees just don't work. <laughs> Ask Luis. <laughs> Ask Luis. We hit the club in Orlando. Well, not really the club. It was the after party in the middle of the hotel. <laughs> So I, I, can, I can get down, but I pay for it the next day. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah. it was never about the dancing. First of all, like people don't just automatically just people started that. And then people say it reflexively. 
Yeah. Like the I'm not going to dance is saying it reflexively. The you know, saying things that you probably shouldn't say, many of us learn to say them reflexively. So don't don't break your don't break your stride by just saying things reflexively without even trying. But mm-hmm. I I guess and and Katie kind of covered it. What is the the tip when it comes to say TikTok and IG, just say vertical content in general, that people don't talk about enough? What is people? What are people not asking or saying about vertical content? I think a lot of different things, but one of the things people are not saying is that it's going to take time. And that's like in anything, whether you are talking about a live stream, a horizontal or vertical, it's going to take time. There is this thought process, this expectation of I'm going to post this one video, it's going to go viral, it's going to go crazy. (laughs) or It's going to take 90 days, it's going to go crazy. And it's like, none of it works that way. So like when people go over to TikTok, they have this expectation of quick, of what is going to happen quick. But there's not that same expectation on YouTube and Instagram. Right. But people have to remember that you're talking about humans. Right. We're not talking about a robot that's just causing this thing to happen. You're talking about you created a piece of content, you place it on a platform and people have to actually like the content. People have to watch the content and if they enjoy it, then they will choose to follow. I've seen so many big names on Instagram and they come over to TikTok and get so frustrated. I'm like, well, you're famous over there. You're not famous famous here. here. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so you have to like allow yourself to just treat it as if you are nobody, you know, and whether that's TikTok or YouTube or wherever, it's like me trying to grow my YouTube. It's like the military chest crawl is so slow, but I'm like, nobody knows me on YouTube. And I'm like, okay, I will take my one subscriber a day if that's what's going to take, you know, because in my mind, I have to go, I'm trying to grow this platform and I'm going to set a timeline like, my timeline is always six months. I'm going to start this thing. We're going to be consistent for six months. I always see incredible su- uh, results with the six month rule, but it's me setting the expectations so that I'm not like, it's not working, you know, but that's what happened with a lot of people. <laughs> that's a really good rule. <laughs> Super good. You know, um, and, and I'm so happy to hear you say that because I don't think people really understand. Someone posited a question in the uh, Ecamm fam about on Facebook about like, what is the most people you have in the stream? I'm like, the only thing that matters is one. Like you guys are still getting stuck on one and a half, 20,000 people in your stream. And I said, I got the hookup. I can send Oprah to your stream tomorrow and a million people will come. But who's coming back next Tuesday? If you ain't ready, you ain't ready. The way nope. restaurants go out of business is they get busy on the first day and they can't do it. Can't. And everybody writes reviews, oh, this place sucks. So mm-hmm. it's better to go slow and low, let yourself go. Sorry, I almost kicked in. <laughs> I have musical Tourette's. I have musical Tourette's. Uh, anyway, you want to go slow and then and get there where you get there. And so thank you for saying that. I, I think that is the hardest thing for sort of people to wrap their head around is that you know, the speed is, it's good for your ego, but it ain't good for the wallet necessarily. Yeah. I mean, we all have the microwave society today. We want our food right now. We want the relationship right now, the perfect marriage, the couple goals, the body that we want everything right now, but everything is one step, two step, three step, four step. And we have to just remind ourselves of that, or we will quit everything before we can ever get to the top. Yep. There you oh go. There you go. All right. That, wow. That's the best. Man, final an hour point. goes by quick <laughs> when you when you're hanging out with Keaton. Your hour goes by quick. Oh my goodness. Uh, what, is, what is the best way for folks to follow you, or what do they need to buy besides the book? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you guys. I'm selling you can follow stuff me today. on uh, uh, Instagram at King of Kelly, and then of course TikTok King of Kelly. I've just started growing my LinkedIn and YouTube. Come to YouTube. That's, that's you know yeah. <laughs> um, King of Kelly on everything. Um, if you are looking to learn more about vertical video, uh, we have a course which is called Vertical Video Mastery. You literally can go to any social media, click the link in my bio, and it'll take you to that link for Vertical Video Mastery where we're teaching you TikTok, Instagram, all the different than ever shorts. And then of course the book is on my website. Oh. All right. I, I'm going to I'm gonna pay you back because you've been such a helpful person to me. Take your, your Ecamm, go live on YouTube in vertical format, and talk about growing TikTok because you can just say, I know I'm new to YouTube, but I got a half a million on TikTok. 
-hmm. and in your hashtag, grow on TikTok, half a million on TikTok. Like literally, you can brag, okay? Uh, okay. Black folks, we, we've been told we're not allowed to do that, F that, you can brag. <laughs> it's Black History Month. You deserve uh, it. Just go ahead, yeah. do it. And do those like, like once or twice a week on a very okay. set schedule. For even if it's only 15 minutes because you're working with shorts, you don't have to be there forever and just do this growing on TikTok Q&A on, on uh, YouTube. And you can say this works for YouTube shorts. I'm just a professional at TikTok, but the content is the same. How you play the game is slightly different. If you okay. do that once a week for like the next six months, your YouTube channel will absolutely explode. Now, if you can backfill that with like two to three minute videos and don't hyper edit them either on mm -hmm. how to do these things. Some of them you've already recorded in vertical. Take the vertical mm -hmm. video you've already recorded from TikTok, throw it up in your screen and use this side to put words and then post it to YouTube as a 16 by nine explaining the program. If you do those two oh. things, you would grow. And of course you can hit your brother up because I got you. YouTube <laughs> is my life. You do that yes. ticky thing, I got the tubes. I got the tubes. Okay. We're all okay. taking notes. All right. We're all like, okay, all right. be, down. <laughs> be right back. Right. There you go. I love it. Anything you need. Cause that, cause the thing that everyone forgets about YouTube is it is hyper searchable and that search mm -hmm. engine really does work. And people are absolutely searching how to grow on TikTok. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the people that are doing it right now, they're all youngins. There's nobody of a certain vintage out there showing folks how to grow professional business on mm -hmm. TikTok. And like, you know, they really use the title, go on TikTok without dancing. Don't even bring the dancing crap up. It's old and <laughs> stupid. It's played out. Like, yeah. it ain't even important. You know uh... what I'm saying? All right. That is it, folks. This was so good. Kenya, you're a rock star. Yeah, Happy, this uh, flew Valentino's by. Day. My mind is <laughs> like all the, all the like virtual notes. I'm going to literally play this episode back so that we can get better at all this for this show. So thank you so much for the tips. Thank you for having oh. me and for the camera. Oh, oh my gosh, we're so yeah. excited. The second we were talking to Obsbot, I was like, oh wait, no, we we need to give Kenya a camera and then also we need to give one away to everyone else. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was, it's going to be and great. Katie, I, I know I'm going to hate me for this, but you got to close out the show. I got to go talk no, to No, no, you're totally <laughs> so, fine. All right. So you got to do this all by yourself. Louise got to roll the credits you, you have us. a Katie scene? <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right, there we are. There, there we are. All I'm right. Out. Well, well, Doc Peace is out on us. If you want to find this show, you can go over to flow.ecam.com. That's our fancy, awesome new website brought to you by Podpage. I built it myself, so I have to say it looks pretty amazing. All the credit goes to me for this one. You can also listen to us wherever you would like to get your podcast. We are on all the different podcast players. Obviously, we are also on YouTube and you can join us for the live recordings every Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern or watch on YouTube whenever you'd like. But we have a lot of fun. And this show, unlike all the other shows, no, just kidding. All of our shows are brought to you by Captivate. They are an absolutely incredible podcast host. What makes them really special and why we stick with them beyond any other option out there is that they really have a grow mentality. So they have so many incredible marketing focused tools built into this platform. So it's not just there to send your podcast out to Apple and Spotify and all of the other podcast players. It's really dedicated to making the entire podcast process easier and to help you grow your audience in ways that work. So if you haven't yet started your podcast or you're looking to make a change for your podcast host, we highly recommend Captivate. You can find them at captivate.fm. <laughs> and now we're back. We gave, oh, Luis is pretending to be Doc. I love it. <laughs> I had to fill the hole in like no time. So instead of you that, had to like, fill the hole. like, let's just change this camera to here. And then I could easily <sighs> just kind of like do one of those. And now I'm myself. <laughs> Got rid of Doc's name. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I should also say we didn't I didn't give Luis enough time to add an extra slide to this, but also huge thanks to our friends at Obspot who were gracious enough to allow us to do a fun camera giveaway. And if it is still around February 13th or 14th while you are listening, we are also going to be giving a camera away on our Instagram channel. So you can find that we are Ecam Network on Instagram. So swing on over there. And you could win one. And obviously, if you want to be a guest on the show, sometimes we give away stuff. So you should swing over to our website and uh, and enter to be a guest. We'd love to have people on 
Well, thank you so much, Kenya, for hanging out with us. Huge thanks to yeah, Doc. Thank you. It was so fun. On to the next show. And thanks to Luis, as always. And I'm not as good at saying this, but but we'll say it just for Aiden. Flowriders out. <laughs> <laughs>